Okay, so today I will tell you about Colosseum <coughs> at home. So, Okay, so write down the first point. It is also called a Colosseum because of its size and also its close proximity with the colossal statue of Emperor Nuro. It is also known as Flavian Amphitheater and it is called because of the Flavian Emperors. It was begun by the Emperor Vespasian in 70 AD and finished by Emperor Domitian in 82 AD. It is elliptical in plan measuring about 119 meter by 155 meter uh, so basically the length is 190 and the width is 150 and it has a elliptical shape the external facade which is about 48 meter high is divided in four stories each one has 80 external arch opening <clears throat> the external um, okay the entrance was from the ground uh, to various tiers of seat the main arena was oval in shape which measures 87 meter by 55 meter and is enclosed uh, by walls of 4.5 meter high behind it was a podium the imperial throne of emperor and seats of generals vessel versions senators and other officials of state behind the podium an auditorium was constructed on a rising platform with seats and four divisions for about 50,000 spectators, all of which were reached by stairs from the surrounding corridors placed at regular intervals between the radiating walls. Dense for wild beasts from one end and the gladiator from the opposite end were provided in its lower tier at the level of the arena. The gladiatorial combat to death between criminal wild beasts such as lions, panthers and bull were the favorite spectacles. The various types of gladiators are often illustrated at Pompeii. There are sorry, there was the Thrax who was armed with short sword shield and the Zord helmet and the retarius fought with net and trident. The Roman were connoisseurs in the use of material. Similar to Pantheon hair, also Romans used skillful combination of material according to the purpose to which they were required. Lava was used for firm foundation Tufa and bricks for the walls, pumic stones for huge walls in order to reduce their weight, whereas marbles was used for columns and seat. They are also used the orders skillfully. 
and in all the four stories the robust doric order in the first story which is 12.40 meter high then slender and lighter iconic in the second story 11.8 meter high and ornate and ornate corinthian order in the third story 12 meter high with corinthian plasters in the topmost story which is 11.8 meter high the column space at 6.8 meter center to center which was superimposed which means they were uh, there were columns above the columns an interblator above the interblator and the arches were above the arches which produced uh, with its grand effect or an administration the structure was enormously thick and weighty so it was honey combed at regular intervals by empty shafts and to lighten its bulk its <clears throat> bulk and it was subdivided by a web of in fixed bricks arches the radiating concrete walls were hidden support and form and form the foundation of the four story thus the entire edifice was based on a unique set of highly developed technique of a great strength which was very difficult to de destroy it was therefore therefore rightly said when falls the colosseum roman shall fall now this magnificent building stand in the roman state telling stories of the great combats held during the heyday of imperial rome it has also received bad name in the history because of the martyrdom of the christians that took place under its giant walls <clears throat> so the next topic is circuses the circuses were used for horses and chariot racing and were divided and sorry and were derived from hippodrome of the greeks chariot racing was very much popular chariots were idol of the day four horse chariots or quadrigas were most common through most common through the time though at times 6 8 or even 10 horses were used uh, the example is circus maximus in rome and it was built in 605 bc by king tarquin and rebuilt and enlarged by julius caesar it is so called because of its size it measured 610 meter long and 198 meter wide and accommodate about 250000 spectators it was just below the windows of the palace on the palatine hill so the emperor enjoyed the race required only to go out in the balcony and look down the race was on the ground which was divided in two tracks by spina in the center which was decorated with obelisks brought from heliopolis egypt by augustus the up to um, the outer area was surrounded by three tiers of seats supported on concrete walls at one end of the arena 12 carcasses or stalls for the horse and chariot were provided the external facade was divided into three stories of marble arcade in the event of chariot racing they used to race 12 times round the stadium and cover the distance of 14 kilometers at times 20 to 50 competitors used to participate these chariot races lasted all day usually four events were held in the morning and four in the evening between each chariot race there was intervals during
Okay. Usually four events were held in the morning and four in the evening. Between each chariot race, there were intervals during which period uh, acrobat musicians and dancers used to entertain the spectators. And the triumphal arches. These were monumental arches built by emperors and generals to commemorate to commemorate the victorious event. The first example of the arches are the Arch of Titus, Rome, which was constructed in year AD 82. It was constru constructed to commemorate the seas of the Jerusalem in the Jewish war. It measured on plan 13.4 meter long and 4.7 meter wide and 14.6 meter high with single arch opening 5.4 meter wide. The soffit of the arch was elaborately decorated and adorned with the relief of Titus in the center and also seems the victory of such as soldiers carrying off the great candlestick from the temple at Jerusalem. The spandrels contain the figures of Roma and Fortuna, with, uh, while its keystone were richly carved. The attic story contained dedicatory inspirations in, um, in front face and supported a statue at the top. The next topic is aqueducts. The Romans paid attention to water supply scheme. Large quantities of water were required for palace, thermal foundation, and large population of Rome. Water was collected from spring and river and carried partially by the tunnels supported on the walls or the arches to a reservoir outside the city. The water was supplied to the city of Rome by a network of nine aqueducts. Network of nine aqueducts. Um, the examples of aqueducts are Martian aqueduct, which is in Rome, aqueduct, aqueduct at Tarragona, Segovia, which is in Spain. The next is bridges. The Roman bridges were simply um, and has a solid construction. The early bridges were constructed with timber but later they used stones. With the use of lime concrete, very huge spans were achieved. The next is roads. The roads, the Romans were pioneer as well as con connoisseurs to construction of road. They constructed a net worth of road radiating from the Rome, given rise to a legend, all roads lead to Rome. They build their roads straight like an arrow with no regard to topo topography, cutting through the mountains, filling in valleys, etc. The foundation and the base courses consist of large broken stones in the lime concrete with varying pores of dressed large stones blocks set in lime mortar. A road known as Apian Way was built in 312 BC which was about 570 kilometers long. Sewers. The Roman also played att paid attention to keep the capital clean by providing sewer lines to drain out the sewage water. The Cloaca Maxima or the Great Sewer of Rome, 5 meter wide and 10 meter high, was built in 680. It efficiently drained out the sewage water from the forum and public building. It is used to be visible where it emptied into the Tiber River. The Fountains. 
The fountains were very important feature in the Rome. They generally occupied the main squares of imperial Rome through many fountains, which were provided in the private house gardens. The fountains were gracefully designed with great variety of colored marbles, either as basin or as spouting jets, or spouting jets, or sometimes gushing water from fish or such objects supported by bronze statue of nymph, etc. These fountains displaying the gushing and the pouring water increase the charm and beauty and beauty of the capital Rome. So this was all about the basic uh, architectural work in the Rome and uh, in the ancient Rome, which have been done. So we have studied everything: the amphitheaters, the thermae, the basilicas, and even the roads, sewers, and all. Uh, like base uh, and the basic orders, plus uh, the fountains, the art, the type of arches they have, and about the closium as well. Uh, so in the next class, we'll start with the interiors, or we can head uh, towards the early Christian architecture. Thank you for today.